you've been paying attention to the JavaScript community lately, it might seem like it's impossible to find work if you're not a TypeScript expert, and that anyone using plain old JavaScript is hopelessly behind. This is false. There are a lot of good reasons not to use TypeScript depending on your project, and there's plenty of work to be found that doesn't require it. That said, Microsoft's static typing language has definitely made significant inroads, especially in the Angular community, though the React community is also getting pretty into it. It wouldn't hurt to have at least a familiarity with it, so for the next few tutorials, we're going to dig into it. I promise to do my best to thoroughly explain what's happening, and to not dump too much on you all at once. Sound good? I started working with TypeScript last year because a client of mine wanted me to, though the bulk of their app was written without it. Earlier this year, I took on a new gig where we were starting from scratch and everything was TypeScript, front-end and back-end. That was a bit of a trial by fire, and I can't claim to have come out of it unburnt. There were days when I absolutely wanted to murder whoever had come up with the language. But by and large, it wasn't that hard to get started with, and now that I'm working on a different non-TS project, I periodically find myself actually missing aspects of it. So what is TypeScript? It's basically an extension of JavaScript that allows for static typing. We haven't really gotten into types and type checking in this series, but most of you probably know, even if you don't know you know, a bunch of basic types. In JavaScript, you have seven primitives, and then you have objects which also include arrays because JavaScript is kind of weird. Anyway, the primitives you're definitely familiar with are undefined, null, boolean, i.e. true or false, number, and string. There's also bigint, which allows you to work with larger numbers than number does, and symbol, which guarantees a unique identifier even if you create multiple symbols with the same description. We're not really going to talk about bigint and symbol in this series of tutorials. Maybe some other time. The issue with JavaScript, which is also one of its strengths, is that its variables are weakly typed. This means you can change the type of a variable, and you can do so relatively easily. Watch. We save that and refresh it, and it gives us 5, the word, because that's what we changed the variable to. We switch from a number type to a string type, and JavaScript's like, okay. Heck, sometimes it even does it for us, like this. Save that. Refresh. See? You can't add 5 to a bunch of words in the mathematical sense, so JavaScript smartly decides that what we're trying to do is stringify the num variable and print it out along with the rest of our text. That's actually awesome. Let me repeat that. That is actually awesome. It's one of JavaScript's many strengths, and attempts to frame it as a weakness are misguided. I've got good news. TypeScript has no issue with that code. You're not actually modifying the variable. The JS engine is just temporarily converting it to a string. Here's where problems can arise. This function adds 10 to any number you pass it. The problem is, we were listening to a particularly intriguing podcast and not paying quite enough attention, and we accidentally defined 5 not as a number, but as a string. The result? Well, let's take a look. Our console is showing 105 instead of 15, because it's encountering both a number and a string, and unsure what to do, is defaulting to the stringification process we already mentioned. Now, we could do this. Save that. So that works. And it works by forcing any string coming in to be parsed back into an integer. But that assumes it can be parsed into an integer. 5 can. I like chocolate chip cookies. Cannot. When we try that, we get NAN for not a number. Wouldn't it be nice if our code itself could specify, hey, this function parameter needs to be a number, and throw an error, preferably before we even run it, if we're passing it anything else? Well, that is, in essence, the problem that TypeScript is solving. Here's the TS version of that code. You can see this is throwing an error because I'm in an HTML file, and types can only be used in a .ts file. So let's switch over for a second to a new .ts file. Oh, and let's remove the parse int entirely. Now, if we're using an editor with a TypeScript linter, which can be found for almost all of the popular modern editors and is built right into VS Code, we're going to get an error before we ever even run this code, because it will immediately notice that we've specified n as a number, but we're passing it a string. You can see that error here. If we're not using an editor with a TypeScript linter, well, we're still going to get an error, but not when we run this code in the browser. 
That's because we can't run this code in the browser. Or in the Node console. At least not yet. I suspect we'll soon see native TS support in a lot of places. For now though, we need to run the TypeScript compiler, which will automatically convert our TS file to a JS file. It'll only do that though if there are no TypeScript errors. Otherwise it'll give us a list of complaints. Whether in the editor or in the command line, our error looks like what you're seeing right here. This is often immensely useful. For a short example like this, maybe not so much. We can very rapidly see what the issue is and fix it just by running the script and checking the console. But if we have a thousand lines of code spread throughout our application that all feed different values into that add 10 function, now TypeScript's type checking becomes really valuable. If our code compiles, then we can feel comfortable sending it out into the world, knowing that we're not accidentally producing any NAN errors, or 105 instead of 15 errors for that matter. So that's the absolute basics of type checking. Next week, we'll look into installing the TypeScript compiler, and we'll get into some other examples of how TypeScript works. See you then.